here he is, the man who scored the big knockout win over one Austin Vanderford last Friday in South Dakota, the pride of Ontario and Canada, Mr. Aaron Jeffrey. Aaron, how are you? I'm good, man. That was uh, that was pretty surreal to hear that intro from you. Well, here we are. You you called your shot. You shot your shot, as the kids say, and uh, you made it happen. You put me uh, you put me up against the wall there. I was you know I was feeling the heat, and I had to relent. That's that's awesome. I love it. Uh, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take, right? Isn't that uh, isn't that Wayne Gretzky, a good old Canadian boy himself? I believe it was Michael Scott of the Office who said that. Uh, but yes. <laughs> Gretzky, Jordan, uh, who knows who really said it. By the way, has anyone ever told you that you, uh, for, we have to talk about the look, but you look a lot like Justin Trudeau. Have you heard this? I've been told that too many times. Okay. How do you feel about this? Um, a few years ago, it was it was fine. It was kind of uh, like a funny compliment. And I think now more often <laughs> than not, it's, uh, it's not a compliment. Okay. Uh, so does it bother you when people say this? I mean, you're a very good looking guy. You, I mean, Trudeau... Politics aside, good looking guy. I mean, I think we could all agree on that, right? I agree. I yeah. think uh I think the stash and the mullet differentiates me a bit. So I get it less often. Back when I was clean cut, it was uh every other day I was getting Justin Trudeau comments. Wow. Um, I think this is a phenomenal decision on your part. It makes you stick out. You got the mullet, you got the stash. Who came up with this idea to do this? Um, I don't know, man. I think it kind of happened uh organically. Um during COVID, everyone was growing out their hair. Like you weren't allowed to see hairdressers. So we were all growing it out. And then when I got back into the gym, it was uh, in my face all the time. So I had to cut it, but I liked the flow at the same time. So uh, I think the next best option was to chop the top and leave the back. And then my first fight, all the all the commentary I was talking about was the mullet. So I figured I would keep it. And now I think at this point, it's almost career suicide to get rid of it. I couldn't agree more. Even your Twitter icon thingy is, you know, like a silhouette. It's uh, it's very important in the sport to stick out, right? It's very important to look different, and I think you're doing a great job of that. In addition to the wins and whatnot, so this is very good. Please don't get rid of it. I'll be very disappointed if you do so. By the way, how- I have uh, sorry, I have some uh, some merch, some shirts and stuff. Maybe we can get one of uh, one. Of oh yeah, up there. Yeah. Where can people get it? Uh, just through me mostly. I'm gonna have to figure that out because there's been more requests coming in. But uh, right now it's just through me. But we'll get you one cent, and we'll. Uh, Post it up there in your in your studio. That'd be pretty cool. I appreciate it. By the way, uh, your your family, friends, loved ones. How do they feel about the look? Um, I don't know. I think they like it. I mean, my my girlfriend is my hairstylist. She's oh, a, wow. she's a hairdresser. She's the one who cuts it. So I I think she likes it. My brother looks almost exactly like me. He has a mullet and a mustache too. So wow, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Wait, your girlfriend is a hairstylist. This is like the dream. You don't have to go to the actual barber. She can cut it for you. That's it. Yeah. But wait a second, you just said during the pandemic you couldn't get haircuts. So what's going on? You actually had it, you had the best scenario, unless you just I met. I just, I just wasn't using it. No, no, no. Um but I don't you, know, that you used thing. that as an excuse. It was an excuse. Wow. You weren't allowed to see the hairdresser, so that was my excuse to, uh, to grow out the mullet. Even though you were seeing an actual hairdresser. Wow. That is uh I mean, that was like the biggest problem for everyone. How are we going to cut her hair? How are we going to cut her hair? You had it made and you still grew it out. I appreciate the solidarity. Um, all right. So the look is great. The fighting is great. Now 2-0 in Bellator. You get this opportunity, eight days notice against the guy who just fought for the belt against Gegard Musasi. What are you thinking? Um, everything, man. Like excited, nervous, uh, all of the above. It, it, everything happens so fast uh, from like finding out the fight was a potential um to like getting getting in talks with Bellator to signing it, and then all already we're talking about like flights out and getting medicals done and fight week stuff. So uh, I barely had any time to really like sit and and think about it before everything happened. Uh, you were, I mean, biggest opportunity of your career, big name guy, right? Uh, nervous before the fight, like how would you describe how you were feeling? Um, pr pretty normal, man. I mean, once you're in there, it's it's always kind of the same. I don't know. Most fighters probably say that. Like once the door locks, you're you kind of feel the same um, leading up to it. Uh, definitely more media, more interviews, uh, more people talking about like betting odds, this kind of stuff. So that kind of puts pressure on you before. Um, but when you're warming up and you're making the walk, it's it's all kind of the same. What's that headline? We saw a headline. GC, what is the headline? It was uh, Paige Van Zandt. Here it is. Um, watch Paige Van Zandt's husband, Austin Vanderford, 
get brutally KO'd at Bellator 284. Not even a mention of your name. I, I mean, know. I, I posted that today. Yeah. Disrespect. Well, no. <laughs> Paige Van Zandt's husband. Two names I'm, in there. I'm, Neither are yours. I'm just the guy that beat up Paige Van Zandt's husband. But I did disrespectful s- both me and Austin. I agree. I agree. But uh, I, I I did see you say like lay off the you know because I think sometimes uh, you know Vanderford Van Zandt they they invite a lot of perhaps criticism because they're kind of you know out there on social media. But I saw you say give the guy a break. You know, were you seeing a lot of hate come his way? Is that why you did that? For sure, man. I, I mean, probably every fight he's been in since he's been with Paige, that's that's all it is. He's just Paige, Paige Van Zandt's boyfriend or husband. Um, yeah, it sucks, man. I mean, we put our whole lives into this and uh, he just gets shit on all the time by everyone for for being that guy. Um, I don't know. It, it sucks. Yeah. And then when there's articles coming out that I'm just the guy that beat up him, it, it sucks for both of us a little bit. Um, some people might not remember this, but uh, you have been on the Contender Series twice before. Unfortunately, those fights didn't go your way. Uh, after the second one, maybe even after the first one, uh, did it force you to reconsider your MMA plans? Did you ever start losing hope? Um, no, not really. Uh, like the first one, I was still pretty young in my career when I lost to Brendan Allen. I was, I think, I was six and one going into it, and six and two coming out, so I was still pretty fresh. Uh, the last one against Kayo definitely stung a little bit more. Um, like I, I had put in a lot of work for that fight and won a bunch of fights leading up to it. And, uh, I think I was the favorite leading into it and it seemed like the UFC really wanted me. Um, and I, I just couldn't get it done. So yeah, that one stung a bit. I, I wouldn't say I was like reconsidering my career or anything, but, uh, it was definitely kind of like back to the drawing board after that one. Uh, and then you had, after the second one, one fight outside, I believe, CFFC, and then you get the Bellator opportunity. When you got the opportunity, the first one in Bellator, what did that feel like to, you know, get a shot with one of the biggest promotions, some would say number two in the world, here's your opportunity to finally make something of your career? Yeah, it's huge, man. It's like childhood dream come true. I've been working a long time for this and and to finally get signed to one of the big promotions and like finally make a, a livable paycheck and, and kind of get my name out there a little bit. It was, uh, it felt rewarding for sure. Do you feel like you're, you're starting to make that money now? Like, do you feel like you can not worry so much or you're not quite there yet? Uh, um, it's definitely a lot better than it was before. Uh, not to like shit on the regional promotions or anything. Obviously they don't have the money, right? So, um, yeah, this is definitely a big step up compared to that. Why did you get into MMA? Uh, good question. I mean, I don't really have a good story. I, I was asked in an interview uh, a couple of weeks ago, like leading into the fight, they said like, what's your biggest obstacle in MMA? Um, and I said, like my obstacle is that I, I don't really have any obstacles. Like I kind of have to do this because I want to, like, I don't have like a, a bad upbringing. You know, there's guys that like, it's their only option to make money. They didn't go to school. They dropped out of high school. They couldn't go to university, whatever it is. Um, I just got into it because I liked it. I was kind of athletic, um, didn't play many other sports, but once I started training MMA, I liked it a lot. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just do it cause I love it. Did you grow up watching it? I did. And I grew up watching you a lot too. Oh, wow. Uh, who were some of your guys? Anderson Silva was, was always my number one. Um, it took me a long time in my career to realize I was never going to be, uh, the Anderson Silva type fighter. Um, surprisingly, I was never a big GSP guy. I Come was on. Rooting. I was always cheering for, for BJ when those two fought each Stop other. Stop it. What? As a Canadian, yeah. you're rooting for BJ against George? I know. I know. Why? I know. Why is it? Because he's from Quebec? No. You don't like Quebecers, right? Uh, my girlfriend's from Quebec, actually, so oh, I can't right. say that. I don't all know right. that's for sure. No, I don't know. I think I, I just like BJ Penn a lot. All right, fair enough. But even the other, I mean, he had other fights against other people not named BJ Penn. This is true. Yeah. No, I, I like them. He was just uh, not my number one guy. Okay. You didn't. Re- uh, what about Rory? Just retired. You're on the same show as Rory, Rory, who just retired. How about yeah, that? I know. That's. I know the the lineup today is pretty crazy. To uh, to see my face along with those other guys is uh, is pretty wild. No, I, I like Rory a lot. I remember there was a time not that long ago where Rory was, you know, the up and coming, fresh face, the prospect, the super prospect. It's it's amazing how quickly everything can change, right? Everything can change in an instant. Um, those 17 years probably for him were a blur. When you see things like that, you know, like this guy, you know, how old are you? You're in your mid-20s, right? 29. 29, okay. I mean, you still have some ways to go. You're just getting started in some respects. 
does that make you feel like I, I got to get to work? You know, this, this, this is not a, this is not like a full career, right? You don't get to do this until you're 70 or 80. You get to do this until you're 40 or something like that. If you're lucky, you got to strike now. For sure, for sure man. And uh, yeah, like you said, it was probably a, a blur for him. Um, and like this last two weeks for me, like two weeks ago, I didn't have this fight against Austin book that just had a Bellator debut. And now I'm, I'm getting interviews with you and they're talking about like title shots and, and what's next for me. I'm in the top 10 of Bellator. So yeah, things, things change fast, man. It's hard to to sit back and take it all in. Uh, after like, if this opportunity didn't come about, who do you think you would have fought next? I have no idea. I don't even know like how many guys are are in the division outside the top 10. Uh, I don't think it would have been a top 10 guy yet. I think they probably would have given me one or two more fights even before I broke in. Yeah. Um, and uh, in Bellator, you like them? They're treating you well? Oh, they're awesome, man. Yeah, very, very professional, very good to me. Um, everything's super smooth. Like they they put together this whole thing within like eight days of signing the fight, right? Like they yeah. they flew me out there early. They got my medicals done. Everything was very smooth. So yeah, they're they're very good to me. Obviously, it was a business trip, but I mean, South Dakota, not exactly the most exotic spot, right? No, but it's nice. I'm I'm a rural guy. I'm from uh, Tilsonburg. I don't know how how well do you know like Ontario region? Uh, not. I mean, I know Toronto. Obviously, I know Ottawa. In London. Uh, I know of it. I've never been. I'm like 45 minutes south of London and it's like rural. It's just uh, fields everywhere. It's like the heart of tobacco country. Okay. So uh, Sioux Falls was nice. It kind of felt like right at home for me. And uh, how far is that from Toronto? Uh, like an hour 30. Okay. That's not too bad. I know of uh, Marineland. You know Marineland in Niagara Falls? I, I know Marineland. You know that commercial in Niagara Falls, yeah. Ontario? Yeah. Marine land. I, I'm pretty close to Niagara Falls. I live in uh, like Thorold. It's like 10 minutes from Niagara Falls. Wow. And I train in St. Catherine, which is right there too. And so what's the big, like, where do you train? Uh, Niagara top team there. It's a solid gym, man. We're, we're on the way up. Uh, I don't know if you know who Anthony Romero is. He was on contender yeah. series and he won. Didn't get a contract. We have Jasmine jazz Davicious. She's in the UFC now. She's oh, yeah. on contender series. Two fights in the UFC. Um, and we got a lot of up and comers, man. And, uh, it's nice to kind of be putting our, our gym's name on the map. Finally. Isn't Jasmine the, the pole dancer? Uh, not to my knowledge, unless she's like hiding <laughs> stuff from, maybe I got her some confused with someone else. <laughs> There's someone maybe, else. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know something we don't know. All right. Um, your manager, the great Danny Rubenstein, uh, asked me to ask you about, uh, making Austin Vanderford go night, night, sleep, sleep. <laughs> what is he referring to? So I don't know who the guy was. I need to figure out who it was. He asked me in an interview. He he used those words and asked, uh, are you going to put him out? Are you going to put him night, night, sleep, sleep? Uh, and, and I repeated his phrase and I said, yeah, I would love to get a finish. I would, I would love to put him night, night, sleep, sleep. And they, they clipped it and they only posted that part. <laughs> so now I'm the night, night, sleep, sleep guy, which is, I mean, it's not something I would typically say. So uh, not bad. Kind of it's it's okay. Not my style. It's okay. By the way, speaking of merch, Jeffrey, mullet, mustache, night night sleep sleep on the back. I feel like that's not bad. Yeah, I'll get I'll get that one made just for you. I appreciate. What's the Jeffrey brother shirt you're wearing? Um, so me and my brother have this uh, running joke. Like every time we're doing something around the house, it's. Uh, Jeffrey Bros construction. Uh, this one's Jeffrey Bros lifting, actually. But uh, I think he actually he's uh, he works in medicine and does something that I don't understand. But uh, I think he actually just uh, wrote his taxes as Jeffrey Bros Medical. So now uh, we're huh. an official business. Wait, but didn't you say that your brother trains too? Uh, he used to back in the day. Uh, not anymore. Now oh, okay. Does, uh, oh, guy stuff. But you said he's got a mullet and a and a and a stash. Yeah, yeah, and he's a healthcare provider. So wow, imagine that. Man, so you yeah. go to him like what? Like a, he's not a doctor, though. No, he's a physician's assistant. Wow! So you go there, and he's looking like you with the mullet and the stash. Imagine, imagine this guy. Wow! You when you come to the doctor's office, that is unbelievable. Now, uh, with the win, did Danny, you know, being the great manager that he is, did he get you a new contract with Bellator? You getting paid? I think he's working on it. I, I don't come know on, anything Danny. yet. I, I told uh, I told Danny and my other agent Jake to kind of leave me alone a little bit this week. Oh, um, they're Why? not doing that great of a job about it. I just wanted to kind of relax and uh, rest my brain a little bit, you know, but uh, no, I, I think they're working on that. Wait, and they're not doing a great job of that? They're bothering you is what you're saying? Yeah, they're always bothering me. Incessantly? 
Yeah, incessantly. I mean, to his credit. I, I love them both. I love them both. To his credit, literally two minutes after the win, he asked me to have you on the show. I just want to let you know. Really? Yeah. So oh, that's, he's doing it. And he's a good guy. By the way, why did you want to come on the show so badly? Uh, like I said, man, I've been watching this. I don't know. How long have you been doing the MMA hour for? 2009. Here. I, I bet I've been watching it since 2009. Wow. That long. You're that hardcore of a fan? At a table just like this, eating my breakfast before work, watching watching the interviews from the day before. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. That means a lot. Thank you. Now, why didn't you ask to be on earlier? Um, I don't know. I guess I didn't think, uh, I mean, some dude fighting for like CFFC or something, you're probably not bringing on the show. Listen. I'm a proud Canadian too, all right? I should have I should have shot my shot. You should have shot your shot. There's a lesson there. You you learned the lesson yesterday, but there's a lesson to be learned. Should have shot it earlier. Next time. Next time. Uh when's the next one? I don't know yet. Uh I think they're coming to Long Beach, California in October. I I kind of like the idea of going there. And then I think they're back at the Mohegan Sun um in December. Maybe I can squeeze in uh, two more this year. Make it a five fight year. Jeffrey versus Eblin for the belt. Possible? Yeah. Crazy. I think that's possible. You think it's, it's possible? Crazy. I think so. Why not? You don't think? I don't know. Not. Who else is there in the middleweight division there? There's Musasi, who he already beat. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I don't know, a couple other guys. I think one of the guys he trains with, Dalton Rasta. By the way, what would be what would be cooler for you? You versus Musasi non-title fight or you versus Eblin for the belt? That's tough. Um, they're they're both pretty cool. I think it make would make more sense to go Musasi and then Evelyn. Yeah. I mean, that's a legend right there. Uh, that's a legend right there. Like I said, man, my my life has changed completely in uh, in a very short time. It's an amazing thing. One day you're eating breakfast, watching MMA. Or the next day you're in talks to fight Gegger Musasi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wild. It's wild. Wow, that is amazing. Well, I'm very happy for you. Uh, congratulations. Thanks for putting out the tweet. A lot of your fans, followers, I mean, they were really pulling at the heartstrings. Oh, you call yourself a Canadian. You won't have a Canadian on. I mean, it's crazy, the stuff that I was reading. And uh, I finally, you know, tapped out. And uh, I was very happy for you. It was great. I will say, I like Austin a lot. I think he's a great guy. I was, uh, you know, bummed to see him get knocked out now. Two losses in a row Dude, for me him. Me too. Yeah. I like him too. Yeah. He's, I didn't talk to him a whole lot, but he seems super respectful. And that's why I'm... Uh on the haters to to slow down a little bit because yeah, yeah he's a good guy to put life into this shit they don't they don't need to be uh treating him like that by the way though well, like when you knocked him out like what could you even describe what that felt like no no it was crazy my coaches were right on the other side of the fence i don't know if you saw the finish but i i kind of just stood yeah, there yeah. like this and it wasn't like me uh i don't know celebrating it was more like what just happened holy crap right like would you call that like an uh, out-of-body experience it was i said that actually in the warm-up room I was uh, I was warming up, hitting pads, and moving around with my coach, um, and I kind of realized I wasn't even like controlling my body. It was almost like I was witnessing what was happening. Wow! It was like did an out of body experience. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Amazing. Well, congratulations. Always great to see uh, another young Canadian do big things in the sport. Thanks for coming on. The first of many, Aaron. All right. If you fight for the belt at right. Mohegan, I'm going to be there, sitting cage side, be. with my Canadian yes, flag. Let's... Let's do it, man. Let's go. All right. All the best to you, my man. Congrats. Thanks, Ariel. I appreciate you, man. All right. What an honor. All right. My my pleasure. Thank you so much. There he is, Aaron Jeffrey. Big win for him this past weekend uh, in Bellator in South Dakota. Massive win over Austin Vanderford.